Wingspan on Valley Sports is presented by Coors Light, made to chill. To be able to, to play in Detroit is, um, you know, something you dream about as a kid. Definitely a lot of excitement. Jack Ford from Ann Arbor, Michigan, making his Detroit Red Wings debut. Number 18, Andrew Cobb. Cobb with it. Scores! Oh, oh, oh. Andrew Cobb is first as a Red Wing. It's 2-1. Action. That was a little loud. <laughs> Got like the table in there with it. Well, here we are at Hazel's in Birmingham on what is a very cold Michigan winter day. Have you been here before? I've never been here before, no. No, first timer? But you live in the area, right? Yeah, I live uh, about a mile away from here. So we haven't, uh, we've gone to a few spots downtown Birmingham, but probably haven't uh, experienced enough food around here yet. So I think that's on the to-do list for the second half of the year. Yeah, you gotta get out, explore a little bit I when know. you have free time, I which know. is barely. Yeah, which is very rare. Do you like this area though, living here? Yeah, it's been nice, um, especially with like all the guys around here and stuff. Obviously, like family is pretty close, so kind of gone back and forth just a little bit. But I mean, on the days that we don't play, it's very, you know, it's come back home from practice, it's hang out with the dog, you know, make dinner at home. It's not. Um, it's not too active right now. I'm sure over the course of the summer, uh, I'll be back and forth a little bit more and have a little bit more time to kind of experience Birmingham, I guess. But for the time being, I would say it's very much, you know, home bodies, especially on the days we don't play. Yeah, for sure. That's what the off season is for, is to be able to exactly. explore a little yeah, bit. branch out a little bit. Well, we know you're from here. You're an Ann Arbor kid. How cool is it for you to be back here now, living in this state after being away for so long? Yeah, it's, it's nice. Um, Definitely a perk of signing in Detroit. Uh, I think that, you know, when you think about it in the summer, you think about it going through free agency, uh, there's some things that you kind of imagine happening and, you know, a lot of the good things. And it has honestly been all good. There's just been some things that, you know, you don't anticipate or you don't really think about and um, kind of how that manifests itself within your, within your season. So um, it has been very nice and especially getting to see, you know, my parents a lot more. Uh, girlfriend's family, so it's been it's been really good. Yeah, what's the best part about it? Because you know, being home is yeah. like it's a special feeling. I would say that having Thanksgiving at home for the first time in eight years was pretty cool. Uh, I think my brother and his girlfriend were back home. Um, we watched the Michigan Ohio State game together with like the four of us plus my uh, two of my close buddies from high school and like buddies. So it's like. That was a pretty cool day, and obviously Michigan winning obviously helped a lot. But right. you gotta um, throw that in there. <laughs> well, I have to throw it in there. But <laughs> no, it's just been nice to like kind of just instead of you know it happening for you know them coming up to Winnipeg or whatever for you know one four day weekend of the year. It's kind of like you get to see them a lot more consistently, which has been really nice. For sure, and being able to see them and and relish with them, it sounds like you're very close with them as well. Do you guys have any fun family traditions for Christmas? What are the what do the cops do during um, the holidays? Christmas Eve is pretty much just like at the house and between like the nine of us, I guess uh, grandma and uh, her husband comes as well. But um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's anything too crazy. It's just kind of turn on football and hang out. And uh, my my mom's sister's family, they have three boys and like their oldest is my brother's age. So like they're really close and um, just kind of turns into very competitive. We have like a little secret Santa between the five of us and there's been some outrageous things given as gifts the last few years. So I'm looking forward to seeing what tops it this year. <laughs> Let's hear it. No, what no, 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 it's not them? safe for camera use. My youngest cousin is off his rocker sometimes, so can't put it on camera though. No, cop family Christmas gets a little wild. Yeah, a little bit. Well, I wouldn't say wild. I would just say those gifts are just like, seriously. So, little. yeah, I can't, I can't say too much on camera, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll keep it to ourselves. Do you, so during this time of year, do you feel like you are super into giving gifts, getting gifts? What is your process when it comes to Christmas Ooh. time? Uh, I'm actually ahead of the schedule a little bit this year. I've gotten at least two people done, a couple gifts for some others. So I'm actually ahead of schedule. Usually it's a little bit later. Um, 
I don't know. I like my mom and always asks me, always asks me for like ideas for myself, and I'm like, I don't know. Like, Is I don't, I don't, hard? I don't give when ideas. Get older. Right? At the end of the day, I think it's just kind of just nice being back home, and like that's kind of like my focus. I don't really the gifts. I got to think hard for a few, but other than that, it's kind of like I'm just kind of here to just enjoy the company. Just to have that development side of being able to play with the best kids in my age group, stay at home, not have to go and build it anywhere, um, stay with my friends from high school. Like it, it honestly was, it was so perfect for me, and, and then get to play football too, and enjoy that part of, um, you know, even in a high school experience, you know, having, you know, going for the same place for four years. It's so rare for for hockey players like us. We, everyone's moving away at 15, 16, 17 years old, and for me to kind of be able to do both and live both dreams for a bit was uh, was was awesome. So uh, it took a lot of hard work, missed some class, had some really cool teachers, but uh, ended up being being a blast. So let's go back in time a little bit to young Andrew Cobb. What was the best part about growing up in this state? I think for me, pro hockey wise, it was just the competition. I mean, there were so many good players growing up. So uh, being in that environment consistently, uh, you know, pushed me to be a better player, pushed all the guys that were my age to be good players. And I think, you know, with Detroit and how successful they were at the time, how successful the University of Michigan was, how successful the U.S. program was, all three of those kind of right in my backyard, um, definitely gave me goals to aspire to and um, really smart hockey minds to work with. So I think that was a real, real positive. Um, otherwise, I mean, I think it's, you know, it's a good place to grow up and like play other sports and be outside and good place to grow up as a kid. So there's there's so much going on. I mean, I played pretty much every sport under the sun uh, between me and my brother. So uh, I think that was probably probably the best part. Yeah, you mentioned your brother. Is he younger than you? Yeah, three years younger. Okay, is yeah. it just you and him? Yeah, it's just us two. What's the age gap there? Uh, three years. We never we were never together in school though, so it's four grades. Um, yeah, he was a hockey player up until his senior high school, and then chose golf and is a professional golfer now. So. Um, yeah, he lives in Florida during the winter and Michigan in the summer. So we'd kind of, I'd go to the great white north for hockey season and he'd go to the beautiful south for, for golf season and then we'd meet back up in Michigan in the summer every year. So um, yeah, we have a great relationship and uh, it's fun having someone always at the golf course. You know, all my buddies are working or whatever and as soon as I'm done with my workouts in the summer, it's straight to the golf course to, to hit balls, play and stuff. So uh, yeah, it's kind of it's cool. Yeah, total opposite sides of the I know, country. seriously. I think my parents like going to his golf events more than they like coming to Winnipeg. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame them one bit. So, okay, that's some athletic genes then in the cop family. If you had to choose, who's the better athlete? You or your brother? Or maybe even your parents. Maybe they're athletic too. <laughs> I mean, he knows I'm a better athlete. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I mean... He has, I like, he has a lot in him for sure, and I think like being able to do both at such a high level was was great. Um, I mean, if he was saying, if he was sitting right here, I would tell him that, and I think he would say that too. But he doesn't lack confidence either, so I'm not really sure. But like between all the other sports, like he would say he's better at tennis, which is debatable. He would say he's better at basketball, which is also debatable. He thinks he's probably better at football too, but th those also debatable. Th no, 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 that one's not. There's no way. <laughs> Um, I mean, he's a very athletic kid, but I think at the end of the day, still think I have him, but I guess we might, we might have to put it to a test at some point. That might have to be, yeah, a whole nother test. But I would say the athletic genes probably come from my mom a little bit more than my dad. Uh, she was a figure skating coach and like a figure skater all growing up, so she, probably the skating genes at, at least for sure from her. Yeah, do, okay, so do you feel like you got maybe your love for hockey from her? How did hockey become your thing? Uh, how did hockey become my thing? Um, my dad pushed me on the ice to slam the door behind me and said, start skating pretty much. Uh, yeah, like my dad, I think he didn't really grow up playing hockey, but he like loved the game, uh, especially through college and kind of picked it up. And then like with my mom being a skating coach, it kind of just happened that I was going to play hockey. And um, my dad was my coach up until I was like 15 or 16 and my brothers too. So uh, a lot of like, the hockey stuff that comes, you know, from growing up in like that competitive atmosphere. And I think he helped a lot with that, but 
as far as genes go, I think it's more my mom. Okay, so playing hockey was kind of forced in a way. Like your dad was I like mean, pushing the door. I wanted to, you. but I think at the time when I was three years old, I was like a little scared, hesitant, whatever. Um, I don't think it was forced, but definitely uh, as soon as I got out there past the crying stage and everything like that, I think it was pretty easy to sell for me to get on the ice. Okay, because yeah. in a way, I feel like what you're telling me, you still feel a little bit of that scaredness or... Uh, nah, that's not or, a scared or, look. I think that's just an early morning look. That's early morning. Okay, well, does that apply to each one of these? Uh, every picture, we have a scowl <laughs> from you. Like, you don't even... That one's a bad one. Want to be here. Bad... This one, this is like young Andrew Cobb. Yeah, that's like 17 years old. Yeah. 17. I know. You want to Well, make... you know what? The problem was is I had braces until... I had braces at that point. So at that point, I wasn't smiling. You didn't want to show it. No, and I there. think ever since then, I've just been, you know what? <laughs> I have. I used to have a, a nickname in Winnipeg, Mad Dog. Mad I always, Dog. Yeah, because I'd always have that face like during the game. So Sherrod's trying to bring it back a little bit. I'm gonna help bring it back. No, no, no. no. With we don't this need interview. It. No, no, no. We don't need it back. Fant <laughs> no, this is fantastic. Do you want to know my personal favorite? Oh, okay. Whoa. <laughs> Wingspan on Valley Sports is presented by Coors Light, made to chill. Well, New Year's Eve is also during this holiday season. The Red Wings always have a tradition of playing on New Year's Eve. Did you ever get to do that with the Jets? Yeah, but never like there was, it wasn't like a tradition. I feel like every, most of the teams play, but Detroit's always at home. Like ours was like, I feel like on the road most of the time. Okay, so for you yeah, so we'd be flying to the next city when New Year's Eve hits or New Year's hits. Yeah, yeah. So, but now that you actually get to be a part of that tradition, being a hometown kid, how cool do you think that experience will be? Just, I mean, because it's going to be packed, it's going to be loud, it's it's a cool. I mean, thing. it's another game for us, honestly. Like, home opener was packed. Games against original six teams are packed. Um, we've been playing pretty well. It's cool. It's New Year's Eve, but like for us, I mean, it's another game. Yeah, that's the athlete answer in you. That's what I expected. <laughs> I mean, that's honest, though, God's honest truth, though. I would say that every guy on the team would say that. Yeah, for sure. Well, not just that tradition, but being a part of such a historical franchise like the Red Wings, have you really taken time this season to sit back and be like, I can't believe I am on my hometown team that I grew up watching since I, as long as I could remember. I mean, has it really hit you? Uh, kind of. Um, there's been a few times, yeah, like, I think it's more like the players that played before that you're kind of, were a little bit more um, in awe of, I guess, that you kind of see around the rank or whatever. Um, but it's, you can't get too caught up in it. You know, maybe after your career, you can kind of sit back and think how lucky you are. And um, I mean, I definitely feel the, the lucky side of it, especially just like being able to be around friends and family a little bit more. But um, I mean, you still got to concentrate on the game. Still got to concentrate on, you know, what you need to do, getting better, all those types of things. We got enough to worry about in that aspect. To, you can't just sit around and think, oh, how cool this is, because you're thinking about the next dream. You know, it's like, how can I play really good tomorrow? How can I, you know, help the team make the playoffs? How can we, you know, have a successful season? How can we, you know, go on a run? How can we win the Stanley Cup? It's never, it's never about, okay, you know, how sweet is this? You know, how cool is this? Like. For three seconds, you might think that, but as soon as that's over, it's... Sure. No, that's fair. Just, you know, like I said, I guess at some point it'll maybe hit you down the line at some yeah. point, to because it is such a cool opportunity to be from here and not everyone gets to do that. Especially after you spending so many seasons so far away in Canada, like yeah. Winnipeg, it's cold, it's tough, you know, but... Winnipeg was good, but, I mean, the family part was hard. I mean, Winnipeg was good, like, they were fans treated really well, team was run really well. Um, great organization, they did a lot for us, so uh, I don't want to make it seem like I'm talking bad. It's just the, the distance away from home was uh, hard sometimes, especially during the COVID years when it was kind of locked down and my family wasn't able to come see me, basically. So. Right. You can't imagine how hard that was, so now you feel like you really appreciate it. Yeah, exactly. Being here and, sure. and you're doing what you love, being around the people you love. I want to get to know you a little bit outside of all the hockey stuff. You know, what, what else is going on in the life of Andrew Kopp right now? Um, we got a dog at the end of July last year, or this past summer, so um, 
So hands are full with him. Uh, he's six months old. Oh my god. Yeah, he's great though. Um, what kind? Uh, we rescued him. Uh, yeah, he was tied to a lamppost in a Walmart in Alabama. So oh my we, uh, my fam, my mom especially, uh, has like kind of gotten a little bit more involved with rescues. And I was involved with a rescue shelter in Winnipeg. They have a bunch of like dogs from like the the reservations up north that were kind of like mistreated, I guess. So, uh, so yeah, so we got our hands full with him. Yeah, so you've always been passionate then about animals because you said you volunteered at a Yeah, rescue. I did like some like fundraising type stuff. Hi, I'm Andrew Cobb. And this little guy right here is Andrew. And us two would like to announce that we're starting a partnership. I wouldn't say I've always been super passionate, but I think like my mom getting a couple of rescue dogs and like kind of seeing some stories like made me want to um, do a little bit more and uh, I, w I mean, we would have loved to have gotten a dog a little earlier, but fortunately we got our, our little guy now. What's his name? Boone. Oh, what's that after? Uh, Coach Boone from Remember, Remember the Titans. Great movie. Yeah, I like second it. movie. So yes. That's what we went with. Awesome. Well, I know you have some other secret talents too. I did my little research and mm -hmm. I found out you can juggle. Yeah. Okay, where'd There's that a... come from? I... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think, I actually don't know really, really know where it came from, but. I would say there's a bunch of guys on the team that can jump. Raymond's pretty good at it too. Really? Yeah. We both kind of have it incorporated in our warm up a little bit. Do we need to do a competition between mm, you and Lucas? I don't think so. No? no. What, you think he'd get you? No, no, don't try and start this. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're I trying think to we do. Need to. I know those games. I know those games. I <laughs>
this is the mystery water to you. Okay, I'm like pretty sure, but let me double check. You're, oh, now we're, we're going around two. <laughs> Second guessing. I'm sticking with this. You're sticking with this order? Mm -hmm. Okay. You only got one right. What? <laughs> Which one did I get right? <laughs> the Evian. And that's the favorite, so. Okay. We can just leave that at the front. We'll just put all the other ones to the back. <laughs> we got the winner up here. Are they all rotated or did I just flip two? They're all. Well, one of them's a flip. The other one is not. Well, if, if one pair is a you flip, then the other one pair has to be a flip. That's true. Hold on. I. <laughs> There might be some discrepancy hey, on what, on, what on which one's which because I moved easy. them all around. You're getting in my head. You were one out of five. One then out. you just needed to flip the other two. All I know is I got number one right and that is all that matters. Because that's the favorite. Yeah. Okay. So now you can still say that you're a water snob. Yeah, I can still say I'm a water snob. It was it was close to being not, but. You got a little nervous. I think, there, I, I, think, right. I, think I got it. All right. I'm still sticking one out of five, but nice job. One out of five. I mean, you can say one out of five. <laughs> yeah. but I got the, the, the number one one, right? <laughs>